Hey, happy Sunday, everyone. Joy Joy here. So, this is day 47 of the Vegas shutdown. So, um, I just heard too that. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Hold on. Set up on it. I heard that Katie Hopkins, she's British, was just complaining that um, they're protesting in Europe. I guess they do still have the lockdown going down there a bit. I didn't realize that. So that's very interesting. But um, here in Vegas, you know, Governor Sislek is making us do 15 more days, so up to 60 days total. We're on day 47 now. Um, but... You guys, this is just crazy because during this whole time, you know, construction continued and there's been, what is it, 14 or 18? Was it 14, Jarvis? What are you talking about? Workers. How many workers? Okay, there are 16 workers. 16. And in California yesterday, all weekend, everyone all over the country are starting to go back to work. And so there's, so there's riots and people are saying, hey, we want to go back to work too. And then meanwhile, you have all these ninny nannies saying, why are we sending out mess messages? Some some communities, are, like Texas bars all open this weekend. Meanwhile, Vegas is all closed. Is yeah. this deadly or not? People are very confused. So yeah. Let them know. What is it? Because it's not a deadly virus. The numbers are coming out. You can see from the CDC, uh, all those numbers come out, which is the Center for Disease Control. Um, they came out with the new numbers, and they're showing that it was only like 37,000 true deaths from the coronavirus, which is way less than the regular flu. Every year, the flu comes through and kills at least 50,000 in the U.S. and about 650,000 worldwide. And they found out, yeah, millions of people were affected by this coronavirus, but millions of people recovered, just like with a regular flu virus. So only like 37,000 in the U.S. died. Um, and I mean millions worldwide were affected, but millions worldwide have recovered. Yeah, good point. Um, and so people are looking at it as a deadly virus, but every virus kills people, okay? Every year and every day, someone dies from a virus. So every virus you can consider a deadly virus if you're going by the fact that it kills people. But what you normally would refer to a deadly virus is a virus that is killing people more than recovering. So like a virus is coming through and you have a more chance of dying than living, and that's not what this virus is. This virus is you have a 99.9% .9 chance you are going to recover. That's what they're finding out. It was 0.1% chance of the people dying. 0.1, which is the people that already die from the flu virus. It was the elderly that were very sick. It was the young people, if they were sick, they keep saying, oh, this healthy 17-year-old or something died. For one thing, healthy is an adjective. What does that really mean? I would argue that the person was not healthy if they died from a virus of any sort. And what is your level of healthy? I'm sure the person was addicted to caffeine, to sugar. Um, they may have even been doing alcohol at a certain age or cigarettes if they were a certain age of their 17. And this was a respiratory thing. So it could be due to people that were smoking. And so there's all these things when people say healthy. Well, I'd like to first see that person's medical history of what healthy, just because a doctor deems someone healthy, they're only looking at, you know, certain qualifications. But health is, morning, that is morning, very morning. subjective. Because for one thing, you cannot even realize that you have some sort of respiratory thing. And then, um, you know, because you were smoking or something, and then this, this comes and attacks that. So a doctor might not know that, you know, for a 17-year-old, and you would have thought that person was healthy. So I'm always very, very skeptical when I hear just healthy because I'd like to know more about that for one thing because our society likes to just use adjectives for things that don't really mean anything. Like, there's no definition for healthy. There's no definition for the worst. Or, you know, like, it's like, okay, that's just someone saying it's the worst. I've heard this is the worst virus, really? Because more people are recovering than dying, which would not make it the worst virus. And not that many people are even getting it. I mean, they've done this huge quarantine acting like that's been helping so much. But... <laughs> 
in places that they did quarantine, people got it more than in places that they didn't do quarantine. You know what I mean? It didn't make any difference whether you did quarantine or not. And all of the quarantines have not been the true quarantine. What they should have done to truly quarantine us is not allow anyone to leave their houses and the government deliver supplies and they'd be all in, like, masks and garb and stuff that, you know, like, chem geared out um, with their gas masks. Uh, well, I was in the military and we'd have to do gas mask training. Those serious ones are, you know, you have the little um, filter on there and stuff and they're you clamp them on. I did do where you go into the, um, we went into a gas chamber and you had to take your mask off and, and experience tear gas. That's some that makes you throw up um, when you, you take off your mask and you, they have you do that for a second. You have to leave right away and you start throwing up. But um, that's what they should have done uh, is come in those masks if they really wanted to quarantine, if it was really this deadly virus. And we know it's not a deadly virus because all along they allowed things like in Nevada, Governor Sisolak allowed construction to continue. And we've had now 16 workers test positive that we know of. But I guarantee there's even more than that at the Raiders Stadium. And they still continued that. They did not even slow down that project at all. It's just been like full steam ahead because they want it done. It's supposed to be done in 90 days. So they were like, absolutely not. We're not going to stop this. And they allowed all construction. And the um, resort world had a bunch of um, workers test positive as well, at least five that I know of. And governors just like allowed that all along while he kept adding more days for the rest of us. It's like, oh, let construction continue with a million workers testing positive, you know, no matter. But then stop everything else and continue this shutdown. So you cannot tell me that he believed it was deadly virus because if he did, then he contaminated us all by allowing construction. Because if it was so deadly, all of those workers would have passed it on to all of us and the delivery people and everything. I mean, you have the same delivery people going to every house. If it was really so contagious, then they would have passed it on. I mean, you have the same UPS drivers, the same Amazon guys, the same, I mean, our front desk, the same people, not one of them has been out, which means it's not all that contagious because every one of these stores I go to around town, I'm one of those people I know everyone at the stores. No one has changed during this entire 47 days. So, like, I would notice if someone had gotten sick. Because, like, all the stores are owned by uh, couples around here. They, I got two gas stations I go to um, that are walking distance. And one of them's owned by an Asian couple. And the other one is, is a white couple over here. And um, both of them have not been out. Um, and I see them all the time. You know, it's the same people. And then same with our front desk, same staff that we've had, same maintenance people. So if this was also contagious, then the people that were interacting, same when I go to Walmart, I see the same people. They are interacting with everyone. And I have not seen one of them get sick. And nor have I heard of anyone personally um, recently even get sick. You know, I heard in the beginning, some when I was still meeting people on the strip, they were telling me that people... And they knew of friends that had had it in other countries and that they had gotten better. And they said it was like a regular flu, just a little bit longer in duration and more of a chest thing. What happens is you cough and you can't breathe as well because it's in your respiratory. So you're not throwing up or getting diarrhea, but it's just this long cough that you get and you just don't feel well. That's it. So we shut down the world for a long cough. And just not feeling well and just, you know, and yeah, the people that already had conditions, it killed, which the flu virus kills every year. And people say, oh, there's no cure. There's never a cure for a virus. Viruses don't have cures. What you do is you contaminate yourself with the virus and then you get better from your own immunity. And the way they do that is you either get it and if you had gotten the coronavirus, now you would be immune to it. Um or they inject you with a flu virus next year. Um, that's what they'll do is they'll have a corona flu shot. And what that is is they're actually injecting you with a little bit of the virus, a small amount, and then you get an immunity to it. What they're saying is, is that you're a dumb, typical American, and that's why there's more disease spread here than there is in the U.K. and the rest of Europe. Oh, fantastic. I'm glad you. that's your opinion. But opinions are like armpits and assholes. Everyone's got them, and they stink. So thank you for your opinion. So anyways, back to this virus. Um, it, it, viruses never have cures, and 
the things that have cures like antibiotics are bacteria. And that's what, you know, bacteria is what you think of when you wash your hands and stuff. So you're taking off bacteria and people think, oh yeah, good, take off the bacteria. But if you continue to wash your hands, you'll take off all the good bacteria. And if you use antibacterial soap over and over, you're going to remove all your good bacteria, which good bacteria is what helps you fight against diseases and illnesses and viruses and things. So you're actually hurting yourself if you're washing your hands too often. I mean, just do your normal hygiene. Be be clean like you normally are, as most people are. Um, if you're not, then maybe you needed to wash your hands. But most people generally have good hygiene in 2020. So you did not need to do this over and over and over. If anything, you're taking off your good bacteria that's going to help you uh, fight against any sort of virus that comes. But people think that getting rid of the bad bacteria is going to help. That's not the case. Bacteria doesn't, um, the bad bacteria doesn't give you the virus, but the good bacteria does help against viruses if that makes sense excuse me <coughs> and i cough because what the fuck of, is of good my bacteria bun. there's no such thing as good bacteria mm, yes there is go read about it um Yes, there is good bacteria. <laughs> we have everything in our body. People think of it as like, there's nothing really that's bad. There's just things that like in large amounts or if they're over uh, populated in our body, they can become harmful. But in their own uh, being, they're not bad. You know, even cancer is just its own entity thing but the problem is inside you it, it grows and manifests and it's fed by sugar so inside you it's not a good thing but as an entity you know these things are fine same with candida we have candida that functions in our system it's when we are eating poorly that we are feeding these things and then they become an issue so you can you can cure cancer if you don't eat sugar you can't have cancer if you don't eat sugar it lives off of sugar so right now I I know I don't have any cancer because I do not consume sugar. I get um, the only sugar I ever consume is through collard greens, organic collard greens, organic kale, and organic garlic. You get a tad bit of sugar from those things, um, but that's it. That's the only way I'm get. I get. I only drink water, and we eat all um, organic protein as an animal protein, and we are pr we primarily eat organic beef is what we live and collard greens, kale, and garlic. We eat a very simple diet and um, mineral water. We love the sparkling mineral waters. And we smoke a lot of weed. And I know that I, cancer would not um, live in my body. It would die. So it's not cancer that's the bad thing. It's you are feeding yourself bad things and then things are growing. Because when you give the opportunity for something to manifest and grow and um, overpopulate because of your poor diet, and that's what happens with candida. Candida is a fungus that everyone has in their stomach. And, you know, they're, they're fine when they're, everything's functioning. If you're eating properly, they just do their thing and they live. And we have a real, um, you know, uh, we all work together and it's part of your body but what happens is when you start eating bad those guys overpopulate which causes more problems because when things are overpopulating in your body is when you have an issue that's what happens with cancer and sugar makes everything overpopulate whether it be candida cancer diseases are all fed by sugar so if you cut out sugar, you're going to be doing fine. So when I say if someone is healthy, well, I'd first like to know if they were eating a high sugar diet. And when they say a young um, kid, I would assume they're eating a high sugar diet and probably drinking a lot of sodas and smoothies and all these sugary things. So they probably weren't that healthy. But here's the thing. You guys can keep believing the lies. It doesn't really matter in the sense of like individually. You just individually are going to be dumber for longer because eventually the truth is going to come right. out and it's starting to. People are starting to riot. Right. People are starting to protest. So if you are continuing to believe the lies, you are only going to be like a further like behind yeah, well, than everyone else. Okay, here's how it works. Uh, there is a movement to control the populace, mm -hmm. started by the government and the church. The tool to do so are your, uh, the, uh, the people. The voices that you guys sit here and say lockdown, you are being a tool of the government. Yeah. Nothing more than a tool. Yep. They trust that you don't think. You are you helping the government say. hurt they say, you. put a mask on, you'll put a mask on. And that's what they've been doing. But You're helping the... Here. This person says, hey, man, uh, well, they say that they need to, uh, what it, how do you say your name, right? Shivanthi. People need to acknowledge that viruses don't have a cure. 
the cold is also caused by virus. Right, right. Yeah, so that's what I was trying to tell you guys. There is no cure for a virus. The way you get over a virus is by getting the virus. And how you get the virus is either you get it like if like the coronavirus came around and you got it, or when they make a flu shot for it, then they'll give you part of the coronavirus or whichever flu is going around, which every year they do this, and they inject you with a small amount of it so that your body can get immune to it. And some people get sick when they get the flu shot. That's why, because they're giving you the flu. Other people's immunity is strong enough that they get the flu shot and they don't experience any sickness, but their body uh, builds immunity without them even being aware of that. But a lot of people actually get straight up sick when they get the flu shot. And so they basically get the flu shot, get the flu, and then they that's how they get it, uh, immune to it because they get the flu. So that's why I always laugh at the flu shot because I'm like, a lot of times you're just giving yourself the flu. See, people think the flu shot is going to prevent them from getting the flu, but they end up taking the flu shot and getting the flu. So well, it's do you funny. think Cool Cat says it's kind of like uh, shin splints? You do recover and you just get stronger. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I used to get shin splints like crazy when I was a runner in high school. And um, it was all due to diet, now I realize. Because now when I eat properly, I don't get them at all. Um, and when I drink a lot of water, I was always dehydrated. I also drank a ton of caffeine in high school. And I don't drink coffee you anymore. Drink caffeine. No. No caffeine. Not, we haven't drank caffeine for two years, over two years now. March 24th, 2018. The reason why I remember that date is because it was my birthday. was the last day I had caffeine. And we were down to drinking just um, even caffeine-free tea at that point. But even caffeine-free tea has caffeine. You'll see if you go from where you're cutting out your caffeine, and you'll experience you're like, if someone says caffeine-free, you think, oh, and you'll know it has caffeine because you'll be like, <laughs> zinging. Um, but we cut that out. And I've never felt better, and I've lost an insane amount of weight, Jairus. I didn't even need to lose too much weight, but um, it just started shedding off. And people, oh, you're too thin. No, it's just it just sheds off when you take when you cut out caffeine. It's amazing, and I'll tell you guys why in a second. Um, but Jedi Rich has lost. We know for sure 125 pounds because that's when we stopped counting. But I would say he's lost 150. He argues with me, but I guarantee he hasn't been on a scale in about two years. But um, he has lost so much weight um and he was up to what was the highest weight you ever weighed uh, yourself like 325 i'd say his highest weight he weighed himself was 325 and then i think the la the lowest weight he ever weighed himself was what uh i don't really remember quite honestly well i'm just trying to let them know yeah, what i'm just kind of because i don't really weigh but like i know but i'm trying 200 pounds or something. yeah he's probably about 200 pounds now 200 pounds. yeah yeah so or that I think he's about one anyway. Anyways, I'm just trying to let you guys know. So like, and we did this just by eating all organics, gluten free, dairy free, GMO free, right. artificial was, anything free. So I was 300. Some I don't know if you can see me, yeah. but I was 300 pounds, and now I'm not. So and I don't go to the gym, and I just listen to her. So if you listen to what she says, and if you're trying to struggle with your weight, I mean. Look, here's the evidence you need. You can go online. You can talk to all the doctors you want about how she doesn't know what she's talking about. However, here you go, man. Hey, Look, your, use your eyes. I wish I had a photo that I could show you guys right here. We have them on the you phones. But um, he, he was getting very, um, um, where he was just very bloated because oh, we ate so poorly that it was, um, all of his weight was just really bloated in his belly. So it was like all, <laughs> his belly was so getting so large. And, um... I was, was believing. Was drinking soda? Uh, diet soda. And that's what's funny. People think that's all right. And that's what it's the artificial is no good. You, diet doesn't make it any better. Um, but no, that that we cut out a long time ago. But no, um, when he just, the, recently the, the weight loss was just from cutting out caffeine because we were already on organics. And um, But we cut out, we switched to organics in 2017. And then by 2018, we cut out caffeine. But we started, you know, first we cut out gluten, then dairy, then we went to organics. So it was a process. And now we do all organics, GMO-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, caffeine-free, sugar-free, alcohol-free, artificial anything. So all we eat is real food. We eat real animal meat, real grains, and garlic. That's, that's what we eat in water. So we just take out anything that's artificial, stuff that's fake food we don't eat, and we make everything homemade. So we don't eat anything in packages, unless it's like frozen meat package. <laughs> but that's you know, it. But it's funny because, you see, people, um, caffeine is really just a mild form of methamphetamine. Yeah. Okay, so I'll explain to you why caffeine uh, makes you gain weight. So 
uh, caffeine is uh, a suppressant and it's also um, a stimulant. So and you say, oh, that's weird. It seems like that's not like the same thing, but they are because what it is is what they do is a caffeine. It um, it dulls your senses, so your blood sugar rises and um, you feel more alert because everything is dulled down. So what it dulls is um, your a senses to make you feel hungry and your sense to make you feel tired so you don't feel as tired and you don't feel as hungry and then it also numbs your hormone insulin um so then that's your insulin hormones like <laughs> insulin hormones set backwards yeah you know, sometimes i get like dyslexia with my words it's funny here insulin hormone which then that's why your blood sugar rises because then you're not producing as much insulin so insulin regulates your blood sugar and that's where you get that you know you feel that little jump feel because your blood sugar rises and you feel that like stimulant in a sense you know it feels like as if you got sugar that's when your blood sugar rises is the same as when you were to eat a bunch of sugar you know what i mean jerks around your your immune system Mm -hmm. which goes back to the COVID. right right and so so but then here's the issue with um caffeine so it numbs your senses all of your senses and uh why people like it is because then they don't feel as tired and they don't feel as full because they're like i was really hungry and i was really tired but then i took this and now i don't feel as hungry and i don't feel as tired so that's what people like it for and people think they're doing it for weight loss because then they don't eat but here's the issue while it's numbing those senses is also numbing the insulin like we talked about and that's why your blood sugar rises the problem with your blood sugar rising is then your body's going to compensate by producing more insulin and the problem with insulin is insulin tells your body to store fat so every time your body is producing more insulin you're at the end of the day telling your body to store more fat and to be dormant going to rest hibernation insulin tells your body it's hibernation time store fat and be like a bear hibernate well once your caffeine wears off you also have that hormone that was already producing the insulin that was just in chill mode starts producing again so now we have like double whammy insulin which then just keeps telling your body to store fat to go into rest mode that's why you're constantly feeling up and down where you have energy and then you get tired again go for the caffeine again same thing this roller coaster all the time with your body and you say, well, how do you know that? All you have to do is go read about caffeine. Like, read the definition of caffeine yeah. on any sort of medical thing. Um, if you don't know where to start, you can always start with Wikipedia and then go for, at the bottom. You can read the real sources of where they got information. People say, Wikipedia is fraud. Yeah, don't go just to Wikipedia. What you do is you find, you search something on Google or whatever search engine you're using. Go first to Wikipedia, and then at the bottom of Wikipedia, there's the sources of where they found that information. So you can go and find the real medical things for whatever you're looking up or the legal things or the official documents and that's how wikipedia works if you guys don't know that's it they don't allow you to use wikipedia as a source if you're in college or something you have to then go to the original sources and find the real information that's what i do all the time i seriously scour the, i'm one of, i i read all the time i love reading uh reading about something i'm interested in i'm like scoured and i'll read all of the stuff that's how i learned so i read about what caffeine did and then it clicked to me that's the issue that's why um it why people are slowly gaining weight without realizing because of all of that insulin the insulin just the production non-stop all day long every time you drink that cup of coffee you tell your body to produce more insulin store more fat be sedentary basically well that's not what you want most people are drinking caffeine because they're trying to lose weight get energy make it through the day go to work go to the gym most people throw back some caffeine before they go to the gym which would be counterproductive because you just told your body to chill to store fat and then you're going to the gym and telling but oh no i want to work it up so you're actually giving totally mixed signals to your brain and body and it's and it's all out of whack so um the same thing happens with the artificial anything so when you're doing like those diet cokes that we were talking about earlier um people think it's like people get this idea that if it has like zero calories or something or zero sugar if it's a sugar free it's like this free thing nothing is ever free that you put in your body <laughs> unless it's water water is the only thing and no water of flavoring just water you have sparkle water but can't have flavoring but water is about the only thing that you can have like just free where you just drink as much water as you want but anything else it's not free in the sense of where it, it doesn't affect your body in some way so people think let me oh it says zero calories it says zero to everything 
everything so fine. And they chug back these sodas or these um, crystal lights or whatever, you know, the, this, this, the flavored things. They add their crystal light to their water because water is too boring. And then they ruin the water by putting the crystal light because you know what the crystal light does? tells your body to produce more insulin because what it does with the artificial is now your brain thought it got sugar because it's so sweet the flavor is so sweet that even though there isn't the calories or the sugar your brain starts producing insulin because it goes Ooh, I just got a lot of sugar and even though it didn't get sugar produces the insulin which again another issue did my stuff arrive Check. You may be right. Oh, I thought you were holding. Oh, I thought you, you were right. holding a. I thought he was holding a mineral water. I thought, oh, oh my order came. You may be I right, get so excited. One, you may be right, but one cup of coffee keeps me going from 6 a.m. to midnight every day, never getting tired. Okay, well, that's fine. Then you can yeah, enjoy yourself. Explain how that works, though, because what happens is your, your body will uh, compensate over time. <sighs> that, you know how that works. So just explain how that works. Yeah, it's. You're just. Your body will compensate to anything that you're doing. So, yeah, you can have energy um, if you've trained yourself. All you've done is just train yourself to be able to live off that one cup of coffee, but it doesn't mean that it's healthy. And it doesn't mean that um, your body's happy with what you're doing. It will compensate for anything. My body compensate when I was bulimic and an alcoholic and a cokehead and taking pills and doing all this stuff is still compensated and um, at n- it compensated by doing things that now I'm having to pay for in the sense of building my uh, bones improperly, building my muscles improperly. Um, I was, you know, building protein off of like sugar, basically. You know what I mean? Like it's, you need protein. People don't do eat protein. They think they can build their muscles off of sugar. It's like, it's not. You're going to end up with just fat and um, then you're going to have really brittle bones and muscles because you need the protein. And so, um, the caffeine, yeah, you can train your body to drink one cup of coffee and to make it through the day and to have energy. All that is is called stamina, and you just train yourself. It doesn't mean it's good for you. Um, and if you feel great, fine. Then I don't know why you're on here listening to me because most people are on here because they are looking for answers. If you already have the answers, then go do your own scope. I mean, at the bottom line, if you have the answers to what works for you, then educate other people. I'm telling people that are struggling and I'm saying what works for me. So that's why it's like, it doesn't matter if you have something that works, then go do that. There's no reason for you to listen to me. I'm only telling people that are struggling that want answers. If you have the answer and your cup of coffee works for you, then go beat your heart out. I don't care what you do individually. What I'm saying, oh, you're going to get the boo-boos? Yeah, yeah. He's going to get the baby piece. Yeah. We feed the pictures to my babies. To my babies. I don't have children. I have pigeons. Yeah, so I mean, if you're what you're doing, if, if you are that, if you are the body that you want, are you the exact body you want? Because I tell you what, I am the exact body I want, and I've never felt that way in my whole life. I feel like I, my body is exactly the way I've always wanted, and without much effort than just eating well and light exercise. We don't go to the gym. We don't work out. We just do light nunchucks once in a while. We walk. We do these kind of things. You know, I um, once in a while do some photo shoots and stuff. And that's how we stay fit um, by eating right. And so if you are doing something that you feel perfect, if your body is your perfect size you've always wanted, then don't listen to me. Carry on. I don't know. Maybe your body's different than everyone else. But I'm telling you what worked for me, what worked for my husband, and he did not even believe me at first, you guys. I had to do everything first, and then he'd follow suit. Be like, oh, you're looking and feeling so good. I want to try that now. Everything. Everything I tried. He didn't believe me at first. So... I, my own husband didn't believe me until he tried it himself. So I don't expect people to believe me. But if you're at the end of your road of like, I, I've tried everything and I don't know what else to do, then try what I'm saying. Cut back on that caffeine. I know no one wants to and everyone thinks it's what's helping them lose weight, but it's not. And even if it's getting you through the day, it's not ultimately helping you lose weight. It's actually making you gain weight year after year because it's telling you every time to store fat. And even though right now, if you like your body... Give it five more years, you're going to have more weight than you do right now if you continue with caffeine. That's why everyone's weight is growing. That's why we think older people have to be heavier. It's not true. You don't have to gain weight as you get older. I'm lighter now than I've ever been in my life besides when I was like a small child. 
and um, not by any sort of eating disorder. People think, people, oh, I eat a burger. Okay, that's all I eat is burgers. I eat burgers all day long. That's what I eat is burgers. So people are like, eat a burger, bitch, because I'm thin. I'm like, this is what a normal human body looks like if you eat organics. Now, what happened is we don't know what bodies look like anymore because everyone has been eating so many hormones, steroids, genetically modified everything, sugary things, caffeine, all of this stuff. And so everyone is getting larger. If you look at movies in the, in the 70s, actors were very small and they were similar to my size. And no one thought they had eating disorders or, um, well, some people thought that, but I mean, the majority of people were just thin. That's just how society was. And now as you watch, even the actors are getting larger and larger and not even necessarily fat. I mean, even if they're buff, like for example, Chris Hemsworth, the guy is ripped, but he is larger. His body mass, he's huger. In the past, in the 70s, he would have just been a toned guy. He would have been small. Now the guy is like huge. Do you see how like the actual body mass, because even if you don't as a bodybuilder take steroids, you're getting them if you're eating conventional foods because they're giving them to the animals, to the fruits, to the plants. They're giving them hormones and steroids and colorings and additives to make them preservatives to make them look a certain way to be a certain size. That's why people don't like organics. They go, oh, it's smaller. Why would I pay more for smaller food? Because it's real food. It doesn't have all of that stuff that they're... If you eat what facts, they're giving... Facts. The, the scientists made everything unhealthy for you. Everything has been made unhealthy by the scientists. Well, this is what happened, you guys. It wasn't um, on purpose. I don't think Jedi Rich always thinks it's on purpose. This is more my belief, is what happened is they tried to make everything convenient. Because as um, women wanted to go into the workforce and we didn't have people staying at home, you know, it used to be back in the day women would make home cooked meals. But then women wanted to work. We didn't want the society where a woman had to stay at home. Um, but what happened then is we got convenience like microwaves and packaged things and fast food and everything was convenient and make sure everyone goes to work so get that cup of coffee so they get up on time because people are tired. So it became this system of we don't have enough time to make healthy food. So what is going to be convenient and what is will work? And when they looked at the nutrition facts, they thought things would work. But now we're seeing more obesity and people heavier than they've ever been as a whole. Like... If you look at even an individual actor, you can look at an individual actor and watch their old movies. That individual actor, even if they're still in shape now, like let's say, for example, Tom Cruise. Even though Tom Cruise is in shape and he's had all kinds of surgeries and stuff and he looks great, if you look at his body mass, he is larger than he was when he was in the movies in the 70s and 80s or whatever it was, you know. Um, in the 80s, I think, was when he did Top Guns, one of my favorite movies of 85. Um, but you'll just see that their actual bones are getting larger, their muscles, because of the food and the caffeine. Every year, you add on some more weight because you keep telling your body to store fat. So you're going to add on year after year. And that's why you see people, as they get older, get heavier, and we just assume that's part of aging. But it isn't. I'm 35, and I'm lighter now than I was when I was 16. I was heavier in high school because I ate poorly. I ate horribly in high school. And I, was, I had already started eating disorders from a young age. I'd been uh, anorexic. I was uh, vegan, actually, in high school. So I was eating all kinds of sugary stuff and no animal products, but I was eating lots of breads and pastas and um, I ate a lot of fruit, which people think fruit is good. Fruit is good in very small amounts. It has great antioxidants in very small amounts, like three berries and a half a banana for the day. People think <sighs> bowls of fruit and they all oh, fruits healthy small amounts of fruit like you got to think of fruit as if it was seasonally growing how uh, available it would be if you would grown it in your yard or something or if your neighbors had grown it and you know you could go pick some fruits or berries and how easy would that be for you that should be your access fruit not go to the grocery store grab cartons of <laughs> Jedi Rich used to put like the entire containers in a smoothie the issue with smoothies is now you've taken all of the stuff where your body would take the energy to digest it, and that's where they, they talk about the fiber. Fiber is part of that. But even um, people say, oh, well, the neutral bullet keeps the fiber. 
There's all these arguments about this. Okay, the Nutra bullet keeps it for about 30 seconds, or maybe a little longer, and then after that, it all turns to sugar. So even that argument, okay, if you're gonna swig it immediately after you blended it, then you might get a little bit of fiber, but still, you still, even if you had the fiber, what you didn't have was your body using energy to digest it because liquids go right into your bloodstream. It doesn't take any energy. That's why you feel instantly energy, but you're not burning any calories. So anything that you get from a beverage, you better use that energy immediately. Like in the gym, you better work it off right away. Otherwise, it's all going to be stored as fat because you're not taking any time to chew, to digest like you would if you were to eat a bite of apple. You know, you got to chew it. You got to go through that whole. It's got to digest. That takes calories and energy. So by the time it's at the bottom, where what's left over, hopefully you don't have much, and the rest will just go to waste. But what happens with juice? Drink it. I use a little bit. Let's say I'm even at the gym and I start running. You'd be surprised how long it takes to burn off um, even 250 calories at the gym. You'd be surprised. Good on that treadmill. You'd be like, geez, I thought I had burned. So it's a long time. And most of those smoothies, I would say, have at least 500 calories or more. And then the amount of sugar is through the moon. So no amount of running at the gym is going to burn it off. So all you're doing is you're drinking that before the gym. Same with the protein shakes, same thing. Because even if they have protein, they have so much sugar that it's it doesn't matter. It's like it's almost just be- it's like, yeah, you're getting some protein, but you're getting so much sugar that you're still going to be gaining weight. And what you're wanting to do with the protein generally is lose weight. So, yeah, you're getting some protein great with shit tons of sugar. <laughs> that makes sense. It's like, okay, yeah, you're getting seven grams of protein, but tons of sugar. And once you made it a beverage, you made it now even more sugar than what the label says because it's going instantly into your bloodstream. And so it's treated as just basically like instant sugar. Um, even if it had, oh, it has this protein and this and that. Great. But you still, um, your body's just going to process it as sugar because it doesn't have any opportunity to do anything else with it. You know what I mean? Like that's what happens like with meat is your body breaks it down and then eventually converts it to sugar. See, everything gets converted to sugar. But when something already instantly comes into your system and is sugar, there's no conversion going on there. So you didn't use any calories to convert it. So now it's like... Straight sugar, straight sugar, and sugar is what makes you gain weight. So you're only supposed to have 30 grams of sugar a day. Any more than that, your body can't process it and just stores it as fat. And all these things you can look up online. This is just real medical, scientific things that I'm quoting here. This is I'm not pulling this up. You can read about sugar. It'll it'll tell you on medical things. It'll say that that humans can properly digest and process 30 grams of sugar a day beyond that you start having issues and those issues are you feed diseases cancer candida um you gain weight the biggest one is storing the fat that's what most people are wanting to get rid of is fat i mean the majority of people want to lose weight i would say that's a big priority on most people's uh, to-do list is to lose weight and i don't have that priority anymore because i figured out how to eat and it's the most wonderful feeling because all of my life I struggle with a weight. And I, I like I was always thin, but I was that's because I obsessed on it. People think, oh, since you weren't fat, you know what I'm saying? I was like, no, I, I had eating disorders and bulimia is basically a fat person who throws up. Because you eat as much as a fat person, you just throw it up. But um, so you're, uh, Jai Rich pointed that out to me one time when I was kind of like being a little bit judgmental towards, you know, the someone larger. And then he said, you are that person, you just throw up. And uh, yeah, that's a good point. I'm just as gluttonous. I'm overeating. I'm, you know, doing the, all these things as that person. So who am I to ever? And that's where now I say, I do not judge. And I know that being overweight is not your fault. It's not a self-control thing. It is literally what you are eating is taking over your brain. So when you eat sugar, it turns off the sensor in your brain to say you're full. So if you continue to eat sugar, you'll never feel full. So it's not, oh, something's wrong with me. It's what you are eating is making it impossible to stop. So if you choose different options, you won't overeat. It's as simple as that. And I didn't know that. I thought I would always overeat being bulimic for 15 years. Bulimics, you get obsessed with overeating. You don't even know how to eat slowly at some point if you do it long enough because you just shovel food and it's just horrible. But, and that's how some people get when they get very large. It just becomes, you know, they don't even enjoy it anymore. They're just shoveling food as fast as they can every meal. 
I thought my life would be that way always. And then I realized it had to do with what I was eating, not how much, not self-control, literally what I was putting in my body. Now when I eat, I eat till I'm full and then I'm not hungry again until at least the next meal, but sometimes we'll even skip a meal, and then when we start to get hungry by that, you know, if we skip to a row, okay. But that's, and you're not that ever that starving, you know, with sugar, where you're like, oh, I'm starving, we feel lightheaded. All that, that's sugar withdrawals. You don't experience that when you're not eating sugar. All you do is you, your stomach will even start to growl, and you'll be like, but, and you'll get stomach pains, but you won't ever feel lightheaded or anything like that. Like, that is only from sugar. So all of this thing of, you know, hypoglycemia, that's only when people are addicted to sugar. They get these things. Um, Same with diabetes. It's all because of sugar. If you don't consume sugar, you won't have these issues. So I I come on here to try to help people because I was plagued with, um, I I was talking to Jared Rich yesterday about this. Um, My family always bought me a bunch of eating disorder books because um, I had eating disorder since the age of like seven. So um, I've read so many books. And what I used to do is I would just learn from the books on how to do an eating disorder more. So (laughs) it's a little counterproductive, um, you know, for my dad didn't realize he'd buy me all these books and I'm like getting tips from I learned from what the girls said about how they recovered I was like oh I learned what they were doing but the point of the story is one of the books that stuck out was called The Monster Within and I remember thinking that's just how I felt all the time it did feel like a monster like I couldn't control it like it was like all I thought about all day was food and what I was going to eat and my weight and, and the insecurities and this and that. And a lot of people are plagued by that all the time. And that's why I come on here. If you're not plagued by that, then you don't need to listen to me. Then do whatever you're doing because I'm just telling you what worked for me and my husband. Might not work for you. I think it will. But everyone's got their opinions, like I said. And opinions are like armpits and assholes. Everyone's got them and they stink. And everyone's entitled to them. Just like you're entitled to have an asshole, I guess. Um, So you don't have to listen to me if everything is working great for you. Then carry on. But if it's not working and you're feeling out of sorts and you're feeling like you have no options and you're tired of trying diet after diet after diet and you're plagued by especially during this quarantine you're sitting at home and all you think about is food and the fridge is like your enemy (laughs) my mom um you know my mom killed herself and i've told you guys this before but my mom was a very very funny person um she was hilarious but she was very sarcastic and she could be very um mean funny that's kind of how her family you know like they were that uh, generation where you kind of uh, teased people and stuff and so um she wanted to help her sister one time because they were struggling because my mom you know struggled with eating disorders and so she said she was struggling with the you know she didn't want to eat every time she went to the fridge so my mom put a picture of a of a, of a pig on the fridge and wrote her sister's name on it she thought that would help her not want to eat but that wasn't you know what was helpful but it's funny because um people think like just don't call people names and then that will make them feel better but no one feels good whether you call them a name or not you know what I mean like if you feel fat it doesn't matter if someone calls you fat or not it's how you feel on the inside and if you don't feel fat then who cares if someone calls you fat right people call me too thin all the time and sometimes that hurts my feelings because you know I don't want to be too thin I want to be healthy looking and that's why I eat healthy and I feel that I look healthy but people think I look too thin because they're not used to what healthy looks like anymore but that can hurt my feelings you know I don't want to be they call me methed out and cracked out on drugs and all that stuff just because I'm thin and I tell you guys what we do and we eat extremely healthy and I've never been healthier in my life so I feel luckily then it doesn't affect me as much because I do feel so confident about myself but a lot of people if they don't feel confident then anything someone says is going to hurt them and that's where we come up with the thing of don't call people fat because if you already are feeling fat it's just you know salt in the wound but just avoiding calling people fat is not going to make people feel better you know what I mean like just avoiding it like now we kind of just avoid that we have an obesity problem going on and we really do it's it's becoming worse and worse we're having people that are being larger than they've ever been um you know I, I knew a guy who was 700 pounds and he was 26 years old 
700 pounds, he told me. Um, and he was having all kinds of issues with his feet, his knees, his back already. And, um, you know, uh, people's weight is becoming a real issue. And that's why I think a lot of people were scared with this virus, because if you were already very overweight and feeling maybe you're having heart problems, then a respiratory thing could be scary. And I think that's why people panicked, because deep down they know they're not healthy, even if they say, they'll say, oh, I'm healthy, I'm healthy as an ox. But they know deep down they're not because of the daily things they're consuming or what they're doing. They just know they're not healthy. That's like when I was bulimic, I knew I wasn't healthy, but I was on kind of a death mission. I had already tried to kill myself a couple times, and... I didn't care. I was like, this kills me, great. But um, it did start to wear on me because it, it's it's scary knowing that you're doing something daily that is harmful. And you should feel that way if you're eating poorly, uh, even if you're not throwing up, if you're just eating really bad foods, a bunch of processed crappy. If you eat fast food, I don't care if they say it's vegan or whatever. I'm like, okay, vegan does not mean it's healthy. People have this misconception that vegan means healthy. There's vegan ice cream, you guys. Vegan is not healthy. Ice cream is not healthy. I'm sorry. Ice cream should not ever be on your list anymore. Even if it's some artificial thing or soy or almond milk or whatever. Mm -mm, too much sugar, you guys. Um, animal protein is the best thing you can eat, and a lot of it. You can eat a lot of it, too. Like, people are, like, worried about eating meat. They think, like, cholesterol. That's bu bullshit, you guys. That was a misconception. Cholesterol is not what's causing the problems. It's all the other things you're eating. Um, that's causing that is. Um, they think it's the cholesterol from, <laughs> they think it's from the meat or whatever. No. They found that out later. That was not even true, but people just still have, they thought red meat was bad for us. Mm -mm. It's not. I'm telling you guys, I eat it every single day. I love it. Best thing. And I tried everything because um, after I got over my, when I stopped my bulimia, I was very sick. So I had to try everything to try to figure out what worked. And that's why I know this is so healthy because nothing else worked too. And I tried everything. We tried vegan, vegetarian, all smoothies, Atkins, keto, um, we did all chicken, we did all eggs, we did all kinds of different things. And now um, I'm telling you the best thing I found is the organic beef and, and the greens and garlic. We eat that every meal and we eat variation. We do stews and stuff too. Um, and we do organic bones. Organic bone stew is the best thing ever. It's an acquired taste, I'll tell you what. It's funny, as you take out things like sugar, then you'll really taste food again. So you'll taste the essence of the real food. And when you make homemade, real organic food, you'll taste all of the ingredients, all of this, the wonderful essence of the nutritious food. And food tastes amazing as is. We started adding so many things because a lot of food doesn't taste good if it's artificial. See, that's where real food tastes good. Real food from Earth tastes good. You might have preferences of you don't like certain things, but I mean, it's a it's a flavor that you can eat, whereas the artificial things sometimes are so disgusting, they have to add sugar or add things to make them taste better. All the artificial flavorings and seasonings and, you know, all of the sauces and stuff. Um, which the sauces, I used to be obsessed with condiments. I loved adding condiments. That was part of bulimia was just I added condiments to everything because it made it easier to go down, I guess, and come back up. It was just like I love, like, ranch dressing and things like that. All of those, you really are not doing yourself any favors if you're still doing condiments. The only um, ingredients we use are, like, organic rosemary, organic thyme, organic black pepper, and organic oregano. I don't do any kind of sauces. Sauces are just such empty calories. It's, it's almost worse than the beverages because it's just instant sugar. And all kinds of things. A lot of them have gluten, uh, dairy, a lot of them. Um, so, uh, avoid those if you can. We have our, we, our fridge has nothing on the side door. You know, like where you'd put condiments? That is completely empty. <laughs> nothing exists on that, our, our fridge. Our fridge, all we ever have is... Um, I put in, on the second shelf, I put in some greens. I just lay them all out. And then I put my uh, frozen, they, they, we get the beef that um, it was frozen at some point, but it's not frozen by the time you get it, you know, but it probably was shipped frozen. And then um, we put my beef. And then the bottom shelf 
is just uh, water, sparkling water, and the top shelf usually has nothing. <laughs> so we have like one shelf, and the bottom shelf is just waters. And um, if I have a bunch of meat, then I'll put it on that second shelf and the bottom shelf. But that's all is ever in our fridge. Nothing on the side door. We don't have any kind of condiments. And people are, oh, that's so extreme. But I tell you what, once you start eating this way, you don't want to eat any of the other stuff. And that's the beauty of it is you think, how boring. You think that until you eat this way. And then you're completely satisfied. Like, I'm craving um, some breakfast. Oh, I have my, my um, Whole Foods deliveries coming. We were out of beef. Um, but I'm going to make organic beef burgers this morning. And um, that's what we do every morning. Every, every morning, every lunch, and every dinner, the same meal. But it's absolutely delicious. Jedi Rich craves it every meal. He's just like, how is it so delicious every time? Because it's real home-cooked food is always delicious. We lost that essence, and we want, you know, to get the same thing when in a package thing we throw in the microwave. For one thing, microwaves, you just lose your nutritional value. So I don't recommend microwaving anything, even if you had made your meal and reheated it, you now lost all the nutritional value by, by popping it in the microwave at least a big portion of it so we do not if you're going to reheat pop it back in the oven or on the stove if it's something you can pop in a skillet or something to reheat it warm it up but we do not use the microwave except for i store my pan in there and i use it for a timer and a fan that's it now you go well i work and it's hard well Right now, most of you aren't working, so you can start to kind of learn how to set it up for yourself now, but there's options. You know, you could make things the night before, and um, especially if you do the... I prefer beef, but if you did something like chicken, and you can eat that um, easy, you know, if you made some grilled chicken in the morning, you know, there's things where um, you could bring that to work instead of running to the fast food, um, you know, or bring yourself some burgers or something, but people just... They want to eat the way they're eating, and they want that to make them lose weight. And that's usually not the case. You do need to change your lifestyle. And no one wants to do that. They go, they want, uh, I want to do what I'm doing, but I want it to somehow make me lose weight. Like, I want to continue drinking my coffee. I want to continue to eat my, having my cake and eating it, too. But I want to lose weight on top of it. And the, the bottom line is it's just not reality. If you eat a lot of food... You're either going to gain weight or, like, the, the crappy food. If you're, I'm talking about the crappy food. If you eat a lot of organic, it should be fine. But I'm talking if you eat a lot of the crappy food, you're either going to gain weight or you're going to have to resort to something like bulimia or over-exercising um, or, you know, some sort of stimulant or something like a diet pill that some people will take or something that they <laughs> lose weight for a short time and they always get it back because those things don't last long term, you guys. But here's the thing. So... You can eat a lot if you're eating organics, but when you're eating that other food, you can't even eat very much at all. That's why people are like, oh my gosh, I barely eat anything and I'm still getting weight. Yes, because it's the food that you're choosing. It's not the amount. But especially if you want to overeat and you're eating that crap, you're not going to lose weight. There's just no... People think, oh, I can just work it off at the gym, but every year you're finding probably that you thought last year you would be thinner and you didn't want to post your photos because you felt fat. Now you're looking at those photos like, oh, gosh, I look better last year because now this year I'm even fatter. And that's happening to most people. And that was happening to me. I, I That was happening while I was bulimic because bulimia does start to kind of not work as well to where you were maybe real thin in the beginning and then you start to pack on the weight. Some people, some people, I don't know, everyone's different. Some people are super skinny forever while they're bulimic and you're like jeez louise I don't know they must just starve themselves a lot you'll see that um, but um, what happens even if you're starving yourself is you start putting weight in spots you don't want so even if you see that person that's like really really thin they probably have like weight they don't like like on their bellies where they normally get it or like on their thighs or something in, or under their arms and it's probably driving them nuts even though they're like really really skinny and that's the problem with eating disorders is you'll never get the body you want. It'll always be kind of off. It'll drive people nuts. I never liked my body when I had an eating disorder because I always had like a pooch on my stomach and just never really looked right. And I had like really skinny arms and legs, but then like big old belly it didn't work, you know. Um, but yeah, if you're doing fine and your diet's working, then don't listen to me. I'm just trying to help the people that are struggling. But yeah, as far as this virus, it is not a deadly virus. It is a virus that millions of people have recovered from. And that um, they're finding that 
it's only 99, wait, 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 here she go, 99.9% are recovering. So only 0.1% actually died, which they uh, falsified those numbers in the beginning from China. They're finding that China blew the numbers out of proportion, that they straight up lied, and they tried to scare us. And they did. And now here we are, day 47. Governor Sislik is pushing this uh, stay-at-home order till day 60 here. But get this, people are starting to protest and riot in California and in Vegas and in all these states that they're, the um, Democratic governors are being the strictest. And like I said, it's the Democratic governors because they want to take down the economy because they want a Democratic president. So they're hoping that people will be mad at Trump through this whole thing. But it's kind of backfiring on them because people are getting more mad at the Democrats, I think, personally. I'm like you said, uh, people go, you say you're not political, but all you've been talking is politics. I'm like, yeah, because this became political and they shut down my livelihood. And, you know, my I love Vegas since I've been here since 2013. And so then I, it had to become, I had to become political because they're making it political, but I would prefer to not ever be talking politics. I don't vote and I've never voted because I don't like to be involved in that stuff. And I think it's a sham. I think all the candidates suck. I, I've never voted because I never felt any candidate deserved my vote. Um, the closest one would have been Obama, but I didn't even, I don't know, all of them or into shenanigans and they're all best of buddies and they're all billionaires and millionaires and stuff so we're just voting for you know just keep passing the torch to the next other millionaire or billionaire you know what I mean it's like it didn't used to be that way it used to be like as uh, a civil servant you did not make tons of money but now these guys are making fortunes i mean the clintons um they were when that was coming out they were talking about that they were being paid like two hundred fifty thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars just to go talk at a school you know and they're getting paid i mean it's insane and then like trump you know is setting himself up on all of his family and friends while he's president i mean he's just been cushioning everyone's pockets around him as all the rest of us are suffering so that's what they do in their president is they set it up for all their friends and their little cronies and then hope that it'll stay put but here's the issue why they want trump out is because if a another if that okay the way to get a supreme court judge is one has to die right in order to appoint another one well they think one's gonna die in the next term because that ginsburg judge she is very sick and then a lot of them are getting very old and especially with like this coronavirus they those people would be more at risk because they're very old um all of the judges so if one of those judges dies in the next president's term that president will get to appoint a supreme court judge now if that president is a republican then the republicans will um have the majority of congress and the majority of the Supreme Court, which means any law they want passed will be passed whether it's a Republican or Democratic president. Like they can over Trump, over Trump any decisions coming through from a president, or they can be right in line with the president if the president's Republican. But if it's like a Republican president, then they can pass anything they want because he'll have Congress and Supreme Court on his side. And then if it's a Democratic president, then nothing could get passed that he wants because they'll just deny everything in the Supreme Court and Congress. So this is a very, very important um, presidency coming up. And they already tried to impeach Trump, and uh, I guess they're saying he was impeached but not removed yeah that's a big deal so their next um stunt was to jump on this coronavirus and they're hoping that the economy tanks and that people will be mad at trump for this but i think you should be mad at the dems because they are the all of the democratic governors the ones that are making us stay at home requiring these stay at home orders for a virus that they're finding out the cdc the center for disease control is saying you only have a 0.1 percent chance of dying from this and that is only 37,000 deaths in the U.S., which is way less than the regular flu virus every year. So they blew all of this out of proportion for a regular flu virus. And that is the bottom line. And I don't know how many times I have to tell you guys over and over and over, and I've been telling you guys from the start, this is not a deadly virus, and the government knows it's not a deadly virus, and this whole thing was a political stunt. And if you are still believing it's a deadly virus, you are going to be behind everyone because everyone else is starting to wake up and realize that. I mean, in the beginning, everyone was calling me a nutcase for saying what I'm saying. Now, people are starting to protest and riot, and people like Elon Musk is saying exactly what I'm saying. 
And he's one of the most intelligent people on the planet. Someone said, Elon Musk, you don't know what you're talking about. Stick to rocket science. I thought that was like the funniest tweet I've seen in a long time. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, and he is saying this is a complete farce, that they're, uh, they're exaggerating the numbers, that it's also against our constitutional rights to force us to stay home. And also, you guys, you know, government is not really for business. They would prefer for everything to have to be through the government. That's what they would want. They would love to own every business and us have to get everything through the government and, you know, have to, uh, you know, mind our manners. And the only reason why they like business is so they can tax businesses. They like getting taxes from businesses. But if they could control the business, that would be ideal for them. If they could own the business instead of individuals. So they're not for small business. They would prefer to own the business. And then to pay the people shitty wages, you know? That's what they would prefer, you know? Not to have you be the owner and be having all this money and stuff. You know, they'd rather you be an employee of the government. That would be what they want. I mean, ultimately, they act like they want democracy, but they don't want us to have the right to vote for things. They want to control us. It's the bottom line. I mean, why are they telling us to stay home? Shouldn't we have a right to decide if we want to die or not from a deadly virus, even if there was a deadly virus? If I want to go outside and contaminate myself, don't I have a right to do that? Oh, because then I'm going to contaminate someone else? Well, if you guys are all staying inside, let me go and do my thing. I won't contaminate you guys. You should be staying indoors. So that's not right. They tell me I can't do that. Well, they didn't fully because you are allowed to go out, but they're trying to. They're trying to take people's rights, and people are allowing it. And that is scary. Because government can only become powerful if you allow them to be. The government is not powerful. The people are powerful. But if you allow the government to be powerful, then they can be. If you give them power, and you don't take any power as an individual, as a civilian, And even if you are, like in the military, you're still a civilian of the universe, you know what I mean? You're still a human, you have rights. And every time these things happen, like, usually it's a terrorist thing, then they start taking away our rights. Like after 9-11, we lost a lot of rights, and all these regulations at the airport and things, and all these rules, and um, they even were allowed to come into people's homes uh, really easily. They made all these rules of, like where you just had no... Uh, um, uh, like everything was like no privacy. Like they were allowed to just come in and, oh, all under the Terrorism Act. Remember that? Just says, who cares? Why does it matter? Well, because this is um, the world we live in, and if you don't think this is going to affect, is that okay? The rest of your life, what just happened, then you don't know what's going on. So if you don't care about this, then you're someone that needs to wake up because everything's about to change. The world just changed, and you guys are here to witness it. This has never happened before. We have never shut down to this level anything like this. For one thing, we've never had this structure to shut down to this level, and then now uh, we have the structure, and now we've shut down to levels that we've never in society shut down. So this is uh, going to be an insane, um, just the aftermath of this is going to be catastrophic, and people haven't realized that yet, because they're still sitting in their little quarantine homes, ooh, thinking the government's protecting them, and thinking that in 60 days everything's going to be fine. mm mm this is a mess. It's going to take a long time to recover as, as a whole world. Pippin says uh, she loves outfit. Loves oh, thank you. It's my Victoria's Secrets. I actually got a compliment from Victoria's Secrets on um, Twitter. Tim, Tim for says this woke him up. Outfit. Oh, good. No, I was so excited one day. I put this on. I tweeted a photo, and I said, it's a Victoria's Secrets slip. I said, I love Victoria's Secrets slips. And Victoria's Secret, with like 2 million-something followers, said, and Victoria's Secret loves you. Great style. Or something like that. I was like, yeah. Felt good. It's fun when the companies respond to you. Um, anyways, that's my little. Uh, on Twitter, we have so much fun. We will tweet like um, companies, and then we always get a kick out of like we used to tweet Walmart all the time, and then their people would message us, or we were uh, the people at the Orleans Casino would always message us directly and stuff. But I get a kick out of uh, messaging companies. I always think it's funny because you wonder who their person is. They're sitting there like. Ah. Um, 
But anyways, yeah, th- thank you everyone that is um, waking up. Because it's, you know, it's only for you guys. You know, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm already woke up. So is my husband. And we've been woke up this whole time. Um, and we've been woke up for many years now. Ever since we've been eating this way and cut out the caffeine and smoking weed, we've feel really alive and aware, more aware than we ever were. We used to live in, like, this little like so unaware you know with blinders on like the when they put on the horses and you don't know what's going on it's how a lot of people are and now we took those blinders off and um it's easier to see these things that's what people go whoa how do you know well once you take your blinders off you can just see the world clearly and then everything just makes more sense and so you have a usually it takes one really major awakening Mm -hmm. and then someone will have like a make like it's like very obvious and then once you have that breakthrough, it's like other things start to kind of like yeah. Like for us is like, well, we saw a number of things, but some major stuff we saw was like when we saw those those UFOs. Like, <gasps> well, yeah, you guys. I don't know if you know. Go to our website. It's called um, I think UFOs at Mandalay on Jedivish dot com. I think that's the, we have a oh lot God. of tabs. <laughs> but um, back in November twenty seventeen, we lived right behind Mandalay Bay and this is right after you know, so um the people had just died at Mandalay Bay on October first, twenty seventeen. So fifty eight people died and that really affected us because we lived right behind Mandalay Bay. Like we lived in an apartment that was basically the closest you could be to Mandalay Bay and our window looked at Mandalay Bay um outside our bedroom window. We took photos every day. Um Mandalay Bay and Luxor. And then so when those people died that really affected us because it was literally like in our backyard. And we were very upset about that. And um, that's when we went to the cave, was right after that. But the reason before why we went to the cave was because we saw um, UFOs. We recorded it. You can see, um, we still don't know exactly what they were, but they were not anything we've ever seen before. And we've never seen them again. And we were where the airport was, so we saw planes all the time. And this was not what this was. Well, they were flying the opposite and they were, yep. the traffic. And, um, and right. you guys can go look at it. And all they were, they were red lights. And there's just a ton of them going for hours. And um, we recorded until the camera ran out of battery. Jarrett got me out of bed. I was really depressed. My mother... Um, you killed herself on November 18th. Um, so you were getting depressed. And so I get depressed every year around that time. Um, no, it had been many years, but every year that time I get very sad. And so um, this was on the night of November 17th. So and it turned into November 18th, which is the anniversary of my mom's death. So it was a very bad day for me. Jai Rich was out there because he used to film uh, the Luxor and the Moon, and he was like, got me out of bed, and we watched for hours, and we, you can go look on our website, see what we recorded, and it's just these things going forever. And then we were like, there's more than we know in the universe, and that woke us up. And then um, you know people had just died, and then we see these UFOs, and then we um, decided. To go to the cave <laughs> basically well we didn't really know what we were gonna do Jarvis admit um that robert if you have any of you guys are from the cave dr robert it's a little there's no real point to no, really explain it no i'm gonna tell a little bit of the story because actually okay. it's very easy to sum up For, again, like, you just sound crazy. no 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 but i'll tell you, you what happened change. no what happened is we um we d- didn't know everything but like it was crazy to see the ufos it was just shocking we're like whoa because that was a oh opening up we were like what is going on though and then these people had just died and Vegas was in a really weird state because you know the whole Mandalay Bay incident so um we were like we need to get out of here so we packed up our car with everything that we wanted to keep and everything else we left for our neighbors we um we had this one couple that had a boy and we said you guys can have everything in our place you can even have our unit because we had a better unit than them um just turn in the keys in um a day and anything you or it was in like a week anything you don't want they'll take and we left like a Tempur-Pedic bed, a 4K 3D TV, our stereo, our, our speakers, everything. Um, Basically everything. Everything. We left everything that didn't fit in our Jaguar. We had a Jaguar XF 2009, so it's just a four-door sedan. Anything that didn't fit in there. So everything else we left at our place, we gave it to the neighbors. And then we drove, and we were going to just drive until we didn't know. And then we wanted to go see Robert. Jerry Richard ran into Robert at this cave-like place. And we wanted to go check it out. So we go up there. But then when we went there, our car, the oil pan, got broken from the rocks when we drove out there. So that's why we ended up staying. And then the car got stolen. Someone said, someone just wrote, the portal is unprotected right now. Uh, yeah, maybe someone's from the cave. So, so then the car got stolen. But what was the bummer was everything we wanted to keep 
had been in the car. So it was like we had handpicked the things like, okay, these are the things we want to hold on to, and we put those in the car, and that's what got stolen. We were able to, we had taken a couple of things up to the cave because it got stolen a couple of days into being there. So we had unpacked a couple of things, and those are the things we ended up still having. But the majority of our stuff, including the title to the car, was in the car when they stole it because all of our personal documents, our passports, oh, they also hacked into all of our bank accounts because all that was in there. They got a binder that had our marriage certificate, our passports, our licenses, our checking accounts, our uh, title to the car, like everything because, you know, we were moving. So I had that binder. All that was in the car. So they hacked into all of our stuff, and that's why we ended up staying for um, three and a half months in the cave. And so some of you that come from Periscope, um, so the, and we, um, <laughs> the car... Uh, they actually recently recovered it at a, at a junkyard, but they called us. We're like, well, we, can, we don't want that. It's destroyed now. Um, but uh, we never, you know, got any money for it or anything. So we were out the whole car and uh, all of our stuff. So it was a bummer. But anyways, um, oh, and the day, first it got broken into, and we called the cops, and they didn't do anything. They said, oh, call us tomorrow. And then by the next day, they came back and stole the whole car. <laughs> And the cops didn't work on the weekend, so they stole our car on the weekend. The detectives were off for the weekend. So I was like, well, thanks a lot, because you guys told me to call the detectives tomorrow, and during that time, they stole our car. So we actually have a lawsuit if we wanted against well, the LVMBT. The only in three L- years, so that the lawyers weird. listening, you have until December 3rd, 2020, is when we filed the police report. So if any lawyers out there want to take yeah. the case, it's a uh, slam dunk. Right. So what happened is we the car document. was, we were, the, the car was sitting out there and people came and broke into it, but then we saw them. So we were walking back because if you guys know, we would charge from the gas station. We were walking back from the gas station. So we scared them off. Um, and then uh, we called the cops, and then they came, and there there had been some shooting occurred right around. There. It was weird. It was a weird area out there. So then uh, they were like, "Oh, we got to deal with this shooting thing that occurred. So we can't deal with your call or call back tomorrow." But this was a Friday night, so call back. And they're like, "Oh, detectives don't work on Saturday or Sunday." So the guys came and stole the car the next day um, while the detectives weren't working. <laughs> So then we had to go the next week to the police station. We had to walk all the way to the police station because it was super far, too. And then um, she tried to, she tried to like act like, um, I don't know. It was like she didn't even believe me. She was, I'm like, I don't know why you're not, I'm not asking for anything. We're not even asking for an insurance claim. I'm just saying someone stole our car. I wasn't, we weren't even going for an insurance claim. And she's, oh, I don't know. It seems really fishy. I'm like, yeah, it does seem fishy because it's very weird that your detectives wouldn't help us. And then now the car gets stolen. But, um, yeah, it was a mess. But anyway, so that was our 2009 Jaguar. So we never got a car after that. We haven't really been able to afford one, but even when we've had a little bit of money, we bought studio stuff instead. Okay, guys. It's our make off there. Thank you, everyone. I had a lot of fun this morning. That was our cave story. Be sure to follow us. So yeah, if you go, that's why we lived in a cave for three months. Thank you everyone that supported us. We had we had some people that helped us a little bit with the GoFundMe when we were in the cave because we got so sick a couple yes, times. Thank you. Thank you. Some of you guys might still be on here. Thank and you. When we, hey, tell you what, when we hit it, hit. We we'll remember all you guys. Call us, and man, and we'll, we'll we're going to give you a prize. I guarantee you. Am I right? I know right? Chico Cinco is from the cave. I saw well, anybody who, who you guys who are with us because we. What was you. his What was his name? Then the doctor that always was so when us. we get our when we hit it and make it famous, we got the money rolling in. You guys, those of you who have been following, subscribing, text us, remind us. We have it all documented. We'll look it up, and you got a prize coming. What was the doctor's name that was always helping us? Doctor, I want to say Smith. Dr. Mike Smith. It's Mike Smith. He yeah. worked over at Summerlin Hospital. He was helping us when we were in the cave. We were in the cave. He helped us out when we were. Oh God, we were injured. A lot of advice. And medical advice because we were in the cave. We didn't know what to do. <laughs> it was a mess. So, anyways, All right, guys. subscribe. Check you later.
Let's move. Shout out to my man Kali Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out, check it out. Check it out.